Have you ever been on a roller coaster? Yes. yes. Anyone who knows me personally knows it would not be my choice to ever <laughs> get on a roller coaster. And I can confidently tell you the only reason I have ever been on a roller coaster is because I have a family <laughs> who loves roller coasters. Uh, and so I, I remember uh, going to the one down at Disneyland over in the California Adventure. It used to be called California Scream, and now it's called the Increda Coaster. Uh, it's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, but I, I I remember one of the unique things about that roller coaster is a super fast start. Like it goes it goes a few feet to kind of get into the starting gate, and then it just shoots out of the gate like your your head is thrown back, woo! And then as you're going up that up the big hill, you know you can see all around, and life is beautiful here in Southern California. The the birds are singing, the skies are blue, the orange trees are blossoming, everything's good until the descent down the other side. And I can tell you confidently, I do not know what the descent looks like. Because I closed my eyes. I discovered I cannot get violent, I, you know, I don't get violently ill from fear if I close my eyes. And so I have lots of good memories of going uphill on roller coasters. But you know, roller coasters are up and down, and up and down. And, and the Bible story we're going to look at today, how is he going to segue from there to here? The people in the crowd were on a roller coaster of emotion. Oh, whoa. Wow, that just happened, didn't it? <laughs> Would you turn to Acts? The book of Acts is a book in the Bible. Acts chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 19 together. And we've been looking at the great beginnings of the church. The church is amazing. And it's had to start somewhere. We're, we're looking at what God, the Holy Spirit, was doing in and through the church in those times of beginning. And today's story really started last week with Tori, which, by the way, if you did not hear her preach last week, you've got to go on our YouTube channel and just check it out. She did an awesome job. And she told the first half of this story when a man who had been unable to walk since birth was healed through faith in the name of Jesus. And it was so exciting. He had been, been uh, forced to beg there at the temple gates. And so lots of people recognized him. And when they saw this man, that he was healed, that he was jumping up and down, praising God, they, a crowd, gathered. And a, as that crowd gathered together, they were feeling a bunch of different and even sort of conflicting feelings. First of all, they had joy. And that's why they gathered. They saw this man. This is so exciting. We know he couldn't walk before. Now he can walk. We're excited. He's excited. Joy. Everyone's, everyone's feeling joy. But then Peter, one of Jesus' 12 apostles, begins to preach. And he lays it on him. And he says, this person was healed in Jesus' name, the Jesus that you crucified. So all of a sudden, they were on this high. Now they're on this low of grief. And guilt, oh, yeah, he's right. Wow, we, we were part of the crowd that crucified Jesus. But then Peter does not stop there, and he keeps going in the sermon, and he preaches hope. Hope. That would be a great name for a church. <gasps> Let's call it Hope and Life. Woo! That's our church. That's our church name. Yes. And so he begins to preach hope. That Jesus rose from the dead. He didn't stay crucified. He didn't stay on that cross. He rose from the dead to give eternal life to all who believe in him. So, man, their, their emotions were up and down as they're, as they're listening. And I want us to put ourselves a little bit in, in their shoes, but in our context today. Have you ever felt stressed about sins you've committed Man, it makes you have to look over your shoulder. There's all kinds of bad stuff that happens. You might have hurt someone, and so then now you're feeling bad about that. Have you ever wished you could take back those words? <laughs> I have had that experience almost on a daily. Uh, 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 there's, there's stuff that comes out that we wish didn't come out. Have you ever wished you could undo a choice that you made? Yeah. yeah. When this crowd gathered... And they saw this man healed. The apostle Paul, or pa Peter rather, reminded them of their sin problem. He reminded them, you are sinners. You, uh, not, not only uh, did you, did you uh, crucify Jesus, the, 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 the author of life, but we are all born in sin. So we, just like them, we are in the same category. We are all sinners from birth. 
And Peter goes on and he preaches this amazing message. And, you know, even though it's kind of hard hitting there at the beginning, he kind of shifts gears a little bit. And there's three very powerful truths from his message that I want to bring out for you today and apply them to our lives. The first one is this. God removes your sins. God removes your sins. We spend a lot of time in church talking about how God forgives your sins, and he does forgive your sins. But God also removes your sins. As Peter begins to preach in Acts chapter 3, 19, this is what he says. Now repent of your sins and turn to God. Do you recognize that? Turn away from your sins. Turn your life over to God. I say that every single week at the close of our message. I got it from this sermon. Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be brought up against you forever. Is that what it says? No. He said, repent, turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Repenting means to change your course. Do a 180. I was walking this way. I was walking, going my own way, doing my own thing, making all my own decisions. And repenting means turning the other way and going towards God and say, I'm going to do it your way, God. It is, it is literally a change of mind. That is that word, repentance. It's a change of mind. And when you do, God removes your sins. In Psalm chapter 103, such a beautiful psalm, in verses 8 and 12, it says this. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. When we're talking about sins and uh, the, the penalty of it and all that, we can lose sight of the fact that God is compassionate and merciful. He is slow to get angry. This is one of those things I've had to pray about for about 400 million times in my life. Lord, I'm so quick to get angry. But the Lord is slow to get angry. He is filled with unfailing love. And verse 12 says, he has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. Steve, could you bring me my water, please? Thanks. He has removed. So if you started going around the planet, I just all of a sudden got a tickle. Thank you. If you started going east around the, the, the planet, you just keep going east, you never start going west. You just, always, you just always go. East and west are so far from each other. They, they're not in the same place. They're not connected. And the Bible says God removes your sins as far as east is from west. They, they just can't, those two things, they can't be in the same place. You start going west, you just keep going west, 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 west. You're just always going west. You never start going east. In, in Peter's day, when he preached this sermon... And he said, God wipes out or blots out your sins. He uses a phrase that reminds us of writing uh, writing on paper. You remember when we used to do that with with pens before (laughs) before smartphones? Well, in Peter's day, uh, a pen would have looked very different. It would not click. (laughs) And the ink that they used, they they had not yet thought uh, about putting acid in it. In today's ink, we put just a little bit of the right kind of acid in it so that the ink grabs a hold of the paper. It actually sinks into the paper a teeny little bit. In Peter's day, it didn't do that. It stayed on the paper, but it was kind of on the surface. It didn't dig in. And so what, what you could do in that day, if you had written a wrong word, if you had made a mistake as your handwriting, you could get a little, a, a little piece of fabric, dip it in some olive oil, and you could blot it out. You could wipe it off the paper. Super, super cool. And so Peter says, that's what happens in your life. We were all born into a sinful condition. And sin writes bad words on your life. Are you ready? Can I say these, can I say these, these bad words live? Sin, guilty, shame, sinner, unworthy, failure. Sin writes those kind of words on your life. But when you repent and you put your faith in Jesus' blood to save you, instead of olive oil, his blood is applied to your life, spiritually speaking, and he wipes off and blots out those bad words off your life. And God 
takes his pen and he starts writing new words on your life. He, 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 writes, he writes a word like innocent, forgiven, accepted, free, child of God. He writes new words. He blots out your sins and he writes his words on your life. In the Bible, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, but if we confess our sins to him, to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. So if you put your faith in Jesus, you've confessed your sins, you've repented and turned to God, you are forgiven. You are cleansed. Praise the Lord. That is good news. Sin no longer has power over you. Sometimes we try to give it power, but sin's power in your life has been defeated. Praise the Lord. That is very, very good news. You are adopted into God's family. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that is good news that God removes your sins. Do you ever feel like you have to work harder than everybody else to find God's favor, to be accepted by him, to live the kind of life that he's called you to live? Do you, do you ever feel like, man, I think everyone else has it easier than me? I think I have it harder. Do you struggle to feel worthy of God's love? Uh, do you constantly argue with God? Well, I know your word says you love me, but, 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 but. Well, Peter goes on, and I love this next truth. God rejuvenates your soul. God rejuvenates your soul. In, in, in verse 20, he says, uh, Acts 3.20, after you repent, turn from God, he wipes away your sins, then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. That's a promise. That is a Bible promise that you can claim. Times of refreshment will come from the Lord. That word refreshing, it, it means to cool off on a hot day. It, it means to recover, to find relief. It means to catch your breath, be, re, be um, revived and be refreshed. That is what God promises you in the presence of the Lord. He said times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, you realize you can stop your striving. You don't have to be constantly trying to be good enough to earn his favor. In fact, there's nothing you can do to earn God's favor. There's nothing you can do to earn his love. God has already chosen. He has already declared. He has already spoken over your life. I love you. While we were still sinners... Christ died for you to show you God loves you. So before we had done anything good, God loved you. He gave his only son to show that and to demonstrate that. He loves you with an unfailing love. <clears throat> Years ago, man, <clears throat> one more time, sorry. Good, thanks. We have a friend named Marty Nystrom. And he wrote a worship song. It's a very simple, short, little worship song. And it's based on this verse. And I often find myself singing it, even though it's, it's so old. It's probably like, I don't know, 15 years old or something. It's so old. But it just simply says this, times of refreshing here in your presence. No greater blessing than being with you. My soul is restored. My mind is renewed. There's no greater joy, Lord than being with you. That is the truth of the Bible. In the Lord's presence, something happens. He rejuvenates your soul. He, he restores your soul. And that's what it says in Psalm 23. He restores my soul. Thank you. He restores my soul. That's what happens in his presence. He renews your mind because you begin focusing on him and not your problems, not your sins, not your shortcomings, but you begin to focus on him and he begins to renew you. And that is one of the reasons it's so important that we gather as often as we can. It's just one element of a, 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 of a way to be in the Lord's presence. So we came together today to be in the Lord's presence together. You can also be in the Lord's presence anywhere you go. It just takes a choice. 
It just takes a focus. It just takes a desire in your heart. But that's one reason why it's so important we, when we gather, you're going to hear God's word. You're going to hear encouragement every single week. We're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to serve. We're going to hear the good things God's doing around the world. It is, it's refreshing to be in the presence of the Lord. And I hope today you leave different than you came. I hope today you leave with hope, that you leave refreshed, that you leave encouraged. That's, that's really important. And we believe that happens in the presence of the Lord because God's word declares it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, in these troubled times, do you ever find yourself worrying about the future? The future might be next week. It might be the first of this next month. It might be uh, several years down the road. Do you ever find yourself worrying about how your kids are going to do, how your grandkids are going to do? Do you ever consider, do you ever find yourself worrying about what are you going to do during retirement? Do you ever find yourself worrying, what if this happens, what if that happens? It, 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 Peter brings a great truth here. It's a very final, solid, encouraging truth, and it's this. God redeems your future. God redeems your future. He removes your sins. He rejuvenates your soul, but he redeems your future. Redeeming is when you buy back something. You pay for something. And that is what happens, That what God does for us. In Acts 3, 20, 21, it says, he goes on, Peter goes on and says, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah, the anointed one. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration. Someone say restoration. restoration. Of all things. Someone say all things. all things. Yes. So we know these are troubled times. We know we live in a broken world. We know we make bad choices. We know others make bad choices. And all of that comes with ripple effects. But friends, there is coming a day when Jesus is coming back to restore all all things. Yes. Praise his holy name. He's going to restore your relationships with others. He's going to restore your relationships with him. He's going to restore your body to the health that God made for. He's going to restore all things. And for a, a very long season, Jesus is actually going to come and rule the world yes. physically, physically rule the world. So all the governments that's gone crazy there will be one government led by Jesus the Messiah, our King. Wow. That's your future, okay? Wow. In Joel chapter 225, he said, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost. He said it prophetically and poetically. I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Wow, I will, I will restore, I will give you back what you lost. In the end of the Bible, Revelation 21, 4, it says, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, every tear, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. God redeems your future. Future's looking good. Future's looking good. Let's just stay faithful between right now and that day. Amen? Amen. Our hope is in God. He removes your sins, rejuvenates your soul, and redeems your future. Praise the Lord. So if I could wrap it all up, I'd, I'd say this phrase. The presence of the Lord is your happy place. The presence of the Lord is your happy place. You're looking for your happy place? It's the presence of the Lord. This is Bible. I just said it in a way that makes sense to us today. This is Bible. There's times are refreshing for you in the presence of the Lord. So the presence of the Lord is your happy place. Are you unhappy? Get yourself to the presence of the Lord. Yes? Are you discouraged? Are you worried? Are you stressed out? Get yourself into the presence of the Lord. That is where you will find your happy place. So, simple action step. Press into God's presence. Press into God's presence. Go there. You might be thinking some excuses. Well, I don't have time. Okay, so then let's, let, let, let's not that keep, let that keep you from the presence of the Lord. Multitask. It, it, just start there. Then get in the presence of the Lord on your commute. Okay, like multitask. Do whatever you got to do. I sometimes will have, present, uh, I will have breakfast with God. So I'm usually, I, I usually eat breakfast by myself. 
And so I know when I have a busy day and not a lot coming, I'll just get my Bible out and I'll say, God, can we do breakfast together today? I multitask because it's that important to, have, to, to get into the presence of the Lord. Put a, put a worship song on during your commute or, or while you're mowing the lawn or whatever. Multitask if you have to start there. I would love to see you go a step beyond that. But that's a great place to start. And then now we just wiped out one excuse, a second excuse. But I don't feel worthy. I don't feel worthy to, to go into God's presence. Well, here's the truth. God has adopted you into his family. I, I tell you what, when, when my son Steve-O comes to my house, he never hangs his head at the front door and, and like refuses to look us in the eye. Like, I don't know if I should come in. I don't know if I'm worthy. He does not do that. Why? Because he's in the family. In fact, he has a key to that door. He could just come in. He, he, well, he is welcome there. He comes and goes freely, and we invite him often. He is welcome there, and that is what God says about you. You're my son. You're my daughter. Let's, let's, let's just cross that one. I'm, I'm not worried. Let's cross that off the list because God has declared already you are worthy. It's, in fact, it's not even about your worthiness. It's about your sonship. It's not about your worthiness. It's about your daughtership. That, that's what it's about. You can come into the presence of the Lord and find all these benefits we're talking about today because you are adopted, yeah. chosen, chosen by God. It was not a chance thing. He chose you and adopted you. A third excuse, I don't know how to come into the Lord's presence. Uh, it, it sounds beneficial, it sounds beautiful, but I really don't know how to get there. So I'm gonna be super practical. Come to the worship service every week. Pay attention to what we do. Go thou and do likewise. <laughs> so you ever see me read the word? Okay, go read the word. You'll get in God's presence. Do you ever see me pray? Good, go pray. You'll get in God's presence. Do you ever see us worship the Lord with singing? Good, go worship the Lord with singing. Come and, and be, fresh, be refreshed and see what is happening and then go and do that. And you can be in the presence of the Lord anywhere. Here's, a, here's another one. Do you see us give when we gather? Go give, and you'll find yourself in the Lord's presence. It's amazing. So we're, we're showing you how every single week, how to go get in the Lord's presence. So go get it, and don't stand for any excuses. No excuses, because there's something good for you in the presence of the Lord. Would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet? And we're, we're going to just go to the Lord in prayer right now. Would you just bow your heads with me and let's pray. Let's pray. Let's, let's right now take another step into the Lord's presence. Let's go. Here we go. Lord, I pray that you would make us people of the presence, people of your presence. Lord, that we would be eager to gather, that during the week, even when we're by ourselves, that we would take steps and get into your presence. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for times of refreshing, in the presence of the Lord at every time we press into you, Lord God. Every time. While we're still in prayer, if you have, you feel like, man, I, I, I want to get into the Lord's presence. So I'm asking every believer, every, every attender, every person who's here, do you want to be in the Lord's presence? Could I just see your hand? And would you show that hand to the Lord? Lord, we raise our hands to you and you see every hand raised, Lord. We want your presence. We want to have our sins removed, even our daily, everyday sins, because they hinder fellowship with you. We want them removed. Lord, we want rejuvenated souls. So I pray, Lord, you would rejuvenate, refresh, cool us off on a, hard, on a hot day. Lord God, revive us and give us strength to go on. And Lord, redeem our future. Lord, I pray that all that would happen as we press into your presence today in this gathering, Wednesday nights at prayer gatherings, every time that we gather, at home, every time we start our day, every time we face trouble, every time we face blessing. Lord, I pray that we would run to your presence and that we would receive your promise declared and spoken by Peter that we would be refreshed in the presence of the Lord. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord Jesus, for what you're going to do in us and through us. Hallelujah. We're staying in this atmosphere of prayer, and I want to give you one more invitation. If you have never put your faith in Jesus, I want to invite 
invites you to become a Christian today, to put your faith in him, to begin to follow him as his apprentice. An apprentice pays attention, follows, studies, and does. He begins to follow and do what that, what that master, what that journeyman says. How do you do that? Turn away from your sins. Do a 180. Turn your life over to God and let him lead. If you want to do that today, if you want to come back to Jesus and give your life to him, maybe you've strayed away, or maybe you've never put your faith in Jesus, today is your day. And so I want to invite you, take this step, and you will be refreshed. If you want today to put your faith in Jesus, to become a Christian, would you shoot your hand up right now as we've been doing all morning? We raise our hands for prayer. Yes, and are, are anyone else... And online as well, would you raise your hand to God? I can't see you going this way, but God sees you right now. I'm going to still pray for you. Lord, you see all the people raising their hands, Lord, here and online. And I pray that you would do something powerful in them today, that you would save them. Would you just repeat after me if you're making this prayer today? Here we go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you made that, that commitment today, we say welcome. Many of us filled out Connect cards earlier. If you just raised your hand just now, if you just made a new commitment to become a Christian, would you mark the box on the bottom of the Connect card so I know and I can pray for you specifically? All right? God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Thanks, Pastor Garen. I love that the presence of the Lord is your happy place, and that is where you find, that's the place of refreshment. That's where we find refreshment, is always seeking, always pursuing the presence of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, hey, again, if you're new with us or if you um, accepted Jesus for the first time, please fill out that Connect card. We want to walk with you. Put it in the box in the back as you're leaving. Oh, ushers are coming to collect them. Apologies. Ushers are coming to collect the, the Connect cards. Also, as you go out into the, into the week, we have invite cards for Easter out in the lobby area. Grab some. Find your neighbor, find a friend, invite people to Easter. Guys, this could change the course of their lives. We need, so we need to work together as a church to get as many people as we can to come for Easter service. Let's get them saved. Let's do it. Why not here? Why not now? Right? Amen. All right. What am I forgetting? Oh yeah, um, set it. Yeah, so so tonight tonight there's together nights. Please come, even if you haven't come before. Come down to together nights. It's great. It's awesome. Youth, kids, adults, nursery. We got something for everybody. Come on down. And um, as we're preparing that, if we could just have a few people come to tear down chairs, set up tables. Jerry Cole's gonna be running that. Talk to him. It'll be awesome. All right. I love you all. I'll see you next week. God bless. <laughs>